Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness and your mercy and all your blessings. We thank you for this past week and the things you did in our lives. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity we have to come and worship you and praise you. We thank you for the opportunity we have to get into your word. May it be a special word for our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, 50 years ago today, we started our church. Or I, it's the third week in September. I'm not sure which day it was that year. But, that, you know, it, to me, what it really emphasizes to me is the faithfulness of God. He blessed us, guided us, directed us through a lot of different things over the years. But he's always been with us. And um, I just so appreciate him and uh, what he's done. Uh, but I also want to say one other thing before we get started the message, and that is I want to thank, uh, we've got a couple different gifts, uh, Ben and I, from uh, uh, people online for Pastor's Appreciation Month. So I thought that's kind of a sweet thing. So those online, you know, bless you for that. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm going to start with something entirely different. About every year or two I start with something different, generally in the fall. Uh, for the last year I've been just using Bible passages at the bottom, if you're on your, taking notes, and um, different places from the scripture. Today I'm going to go back to the uh, original thing that I used to do a lot, and uh, uh, this will be A1, okay? <laughs> the abundant living. Uh, all the A's are abundant living, B's are um, something else sees, uh, uh, you know, each one as a different thing. And I'll have a thing out in the back, uh, probably next week, uh, indicating that if you're keeping those notes, and um, they're not big changes from before, but uh, I want to review a couple of things. And one thing I want to reveal today, the reason we call ourselves the Abundant Life Church, because we really feel that it, God has called us into a greater life than we ever have known. And I'm going to try to bring some keys out on that. But we had we started off as El Shaddai Ministries originally, but through a series of uh, several different things, over and over again, we it's confirmed that we we're call ourselves the Abundant Life Church. So I want to talk about abundant living today. Okay, I think uh, a lot of people miss heaven by about 12 inches. You may have heard that from the head to the heart. We get a lot of stuff in our head, okay? We know all about Jesus, we know about salvation, and maybe we don't, okay? Uh, but we, we get some clues here and there about salvation, about Jesus, but we don't have a living relationship with that. It's all up here, nothing down here. Uh, unless you have a real living relationship with Jesus where you turn your heart and life over to his Savior, he's the Savior, and also your Lord then you don't have that relationship. You've got it all up here, but you're going to miss heaven because it needs to be down here. A lot of people know different things in the Bible. You quote this or that or next thing. I had an uncle that his favorite Bible verse was, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. <laughs> to me, that was the extent of what he knew from the Bible, okay? Uh, maybe he knew a lot more, I don't know, but that's the one he was always quoting. And he, he, he Put that one into practice, okay? <laughs> and anyway, the thing is that sometimes we know a little bit about the Bible. There are different keys from the Bible, but do we really walk it out? Unless you're really walking it out, you're never going to experience abundant life. You're never going to experience abundant life unless you've got that living relationship with Jesus. Now, a lot of you say, yeah, I've heard about the abundant life, but I don't really know what it is all about, or I don't know how to get into it. I don't really feel I'm experiencing it. I believe in Jesus, but I'm not experiencing it. And I think there's a lot of Christians that have such a, what? Subnormal relationship with Jesus that they feel they're going to be Christian, they're going to go to heaven. But they have no clue whatsoever about heaven or about Jesus or what, uh, what's going on. <laughs> Run into a situation this week. A young man died, he said, have no relationship with the Lord, 
no clue about the Lord. His mother said, oh, I'm glad he's in heaven now. And I think that's where a lot of people are. But that's not right. It's not right. It takes a real relationship with Jesus where you trust him as your savior and you put your hope and trust him as your Lord. So I'm gonna give several different things today. Number one, if you have a bullet in the outline, Number one is simply this, something I've said over and over, living for Jesus is the greatest life possible. John 10.10 10 that we had up on the board a few minutes ago, uh, and I'm going to uh, give it from the ESV translation. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. King James has more abundantly. I think the Greek word there is kind of interesting. Periosis. Uh, I hope I got that pronounced right. It means an extraordinary, full, and overflowing life. Now, having said all that, New Living Translation says a rich and satisfying life. Is that what you consider your life living for Jesus Christ? That it's extraordinary, it's full, it's uh, overflowing, it's uh, rich, and it's satisfying. If not, then I think we need to ask ourselves, what is wrong? Jesus says, I... I came to give you life and have it abundantly. Now, Jesus doesn't lie. Now, if he said that, that's what he came to bring us. So if we're not experiencing, I think it's not the problem of Jesus, it's the problem of us. Why aren't we really walking that up? Uh, this is our, her our, our inheritance as a child of God. We need to claim it expect it but so many of us are living so far underneath it and thinking that's normal that's not normal jesus wants so much more for our life if we're not experiencing it we need to under look at our own hearts and wonder why give, i'll give you another verse here number two is god has wonderful things planned for for you jeremiah 29 2. I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. I know I have the, the plans I have for you are good, God says. Our, our Heavenly Father loves us so much. And as a father, he wants good things for us. Any father that is really a real father wants good things for his children. That's why so many uh, fathers go off to war to protect their kids, or go off to work day after day after day, that their kids will have something better than what they had. The thing is that uh, our Heavenly Father is much like that. He had good things for us. But so many times, we feel so unworthy and so full of condemnation that we don't experience it or don't expect it or are really surprised when God has something good for us. I think God wants to destroy that condemnation in us and that unworthiness. Because once we become a child of God, once we turn our lives over to Jesus Christ, once we said, Jesus, take, be my Savior and Lord, then the Bible says we become his children we aren't automatically his children. We are only his children when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. Okay, but once we've done that, then because he's such a good father, he wants to bless us. But so many people get under that old condemnation, that old guilt trip, when really, if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, he's forgiven you for your sins. That's what a Savior means. He saved us from our sins. We're all sinners. We're, both, we're raised that way. And because we're sinners, we can't enter heaven because God's a perfect God. So he had to do something, and there's no amount of work, good works that we can do to get into heaven. The only way we get to heaven is by death because of our sins. And Jesus died for us on that cross so we don't have to die. Okay, once you accept him as your savior, all those sins are gone. So don't live under condemnation, a lot of guilt and unworthiness because you are then a child of God. 
And a lot of people are robbed of the abundant life because of the guilt and condemnation that they have when that's all been forgiven once you've asked Jesus into your heart and turned your life over to him. Point number three is simply this. The devil hates you with a passion. First part of that verse says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Underline that only. He only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The Greek word there for steal is klepto. You heard kleptomaniac? That's where it comes from. He comes to steal your joy, your peace, your health, your kids, and everything you have, okay? That's but the devil comes to steal. Okay, that says he comes to destroy. Destroy there in the Greek means the ruin, the trash, and the devastate. He wants to destroy your reputation, your dreams, your marriage, your integrity. So the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now I used to say that's the biggest reason why we don't have the abundant life. And that's a real important reason, but there's more to it. Uh, let me just say this. If the devil can talk one-third the angels out of heaven, which the Bible says he did, he can surely talk you into hell. Okay? So a lot of people say, oh, the devil don't bother me, I don't bother him, he don't bother me. No, no, he probably got you already, so he don't have to bother you. So, one of the biggest reasons we don't experience an abundant life is the enemy, the devil, Satan himself, comes to steal that from us. To steal all our joy, all our peace, steal our friends, steal our kids, steal everything you have. Destroy your reputation, destroy everything you have. So, but that's not all. A lot of people don't have the abundant life because something entirely different. Point number four, our sinful nature sabotages our walk with God. I used to blame everything on the devil. Uh, he has a real hand in it, but a lot of times it's our own sinful nature that really hinders us from experiencing abundant life. Galatians, the fifth chapter. When you follow the desires, this is 5 verse 19, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, if that sums up your life, then you're, you're not part of the kingdom of God, no matter what you're doing, okay? Then just go back to that. These are part of your sinful nature. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Lustful pleasures. Idolatry. Oh, none of us have idolatry. Yeah, many of us do. If something is more important in your life than Jesus Christ, then that's an idol. Sorcery, that includes all the occult, witchcraft, all that sort of stuff. Hostility, quarreling. Some people just love to quarrel, okay? Jealousy. Some people are uh, jealous of everything and everybody around them. Outburst of anger. Selfish ambition. None of us have selfish ambition, I know, here, so we have that one. Right. Division. Distinction. Envy, drunkenness, wild parties. Now it says very clear. Anybody involved in all that stuff, uh, you don't have part of the kingdom of God. In other words, you're not going to heaven when you die. So it's not just the devil out to get and rob you of, your, of the abundant life that God has for us. It's our own simple nature inside us. There's desires and things in our life that need to change, you need to die. Need to, we need to die to, destroy in our own self, and that, that we don't just rebuke the devil. We say, I'm going to die to that. I am not going to do this anymore. 
and you come back and do it again, you say, God, help me. That's where it comes about, where we need to really cry out, God, help me see victory in the simple nature of me. I got a kick out of a pastor I was listening to yesterday. Uh, boy, he was an old guy. And he said, you know what? The older I get, the more I have to spend time repenting. <laughs> because he says, I preached all my life, but the Holy Spirit keeps digging things into my life that I never realized I had. If that's not happening in your life, then you need to really come and ask, Holy Spirit, search my heart. Because let's face it, there's still a lot of that old nature inside of us, and it's robbing us of the abundant life that God has for us. <sighs> Point number five. The choice is up to you. Joshua, the 24th chapter, the 15th verse. This is Joshua at the very end of his life, uh, or, or when they're going into the promised land, he says, choose the day whom you will serve. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. That's where it's going to be. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. A lot of people are asking Jesus into their hearts, but then asking the devil into their lives. There's a compromise going on there. We want to go to heaven. We want Jesus in our heart. But uh, that doesn't, for Sunday morning or maybe for devotions uh, at night or something. But we start living for the devil rather than for the Lord. We use of all these old sinful nature and we think, oh, that's so normal for me. I, I just can't change. You can change. The Lord himself will come in and help you get defeat all that. And if you don't, if that doesn't get defeated, you'll never experience the abundant life that God has promised for you. So what I'm saying is, part of our inheritance is that God has a great life for us, abundant life, a full life, a satisfying life, but we don't have it because the devil tries to destroy it, but also our own sinful natures inside us. War against it so we don't experience it. And we say, oh yeah, Jesus promised that. Uh, someone must have it, but I don't have it. It's time we all have it to the full and not settle for anything second rate. Too many Christians settle for second rate Christianity and don't experience the fullness that God has for them, the abundant life that God has for them. Because the choice is up to us. James 4 7 says, Resist the devil and he'll flee for you. Some of the things we really need to do is resist the devil. We need to stand against him when he comes. We also need to resist that old nature and say, God, help me get victory in that. And he will. He's a God that does miracles, and he'll help you. Okay? But again, if you don't resist the devil, if you don't try to get victory in that, you'll never experience the fullness of what God has for you. Point number six, take a stand for righteousness. Galatians 5, 1 says, Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure you stay free. Okay? When we ask Jesus in our heart, he washes everything away. He forgives us for all our sins. And then Paul's telling the people at Galatia, but you gotta stand free. Stay free. In other words, stand for righteousness. Start living it out. Jesus made you righteous because when he shed his blood on the cross, he died for every single one of your sins. Every single one. That made you totally righteous before God. You can't come to God without being righteous. Because he's a holy God. So you've got to trust in what he did. Not in what you've done. Because the Bible is very clear. We can't in any way work our way to heaven. And this isn't working our way to heaven. It's living out the life that God has called us to live. And we can only do it by the power of the Holy Spirit living inside us, giving us the victory, helping us walk in that victory. We need to crucify that old nature, stand against the devil, and determine to live for Jesus. Expect God to act in your life. A lot of people don't expect him to do a whole lot. And if you don't expect him to do a whole lot, he's not going to do a whole lot. Point number seven is simply this. Jesus does want to bless you. First Corinthians 2.9 says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared 
for those who love him. Okay? No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared. Sometimes you stop right there, but the rest of that is for those who love him. God has great things for, in store for us, but we need to turn our lives over to him. We need to resist the devil. We need to uh, crucify that old nature. And we need to believe God's going to work in our lives and through our lives. I want to tell you a story about a man, and maybe you'll guess who it is before I get done. His name's Phil. This is not Karen's brother, Phil. Uh, anyway, he grew up in Louisiana. Very poor family. They didn't have running water, they didn't have electricity, they didn't have any of the modern conveniences. They um, mainly grew their own crops and killed uh, uh, deer and cats and squirrels and that, ate it and fished. That was it. Uh, anyway, he uh, went to school and he loved me, he was good at playing football. So he became the quarterback of the team. Uh, one of the young girls who was a little bit, uh, had, came up from a little bit better life than he did, uh, fell in love with him and he got married. He got a football college scholarship to college and uh, went to college, became a teacher. And while he was teaching, he uh, got in the wrong crowd and started drinking pretty bad. Became quite an alcoholic to the point where his wife moved out on him with the kids, that they just, she just couldn't take it. He bought a bar, and uh, thinking that uh, he drank all the time anyway, he'd be at the bar. Anyway, long story short, he finally became a Christian. He realized that he needed Jesus. Totally changed his life. Now the first couple of years at college, he was a college quarterback. The third year of college, he decided he, it was, uh, he didn't want to play football anymore. So his backup came in, and he took over uh, for uh, the football. And um, <laughs> Bert per uh, Bradshaw was his backup. So you can see how good he was. Uh, he was off, uh, but the, the thing is that because he didn't know the Lord and didn't want to have anything to do with the Lord, his life spiraled down, down, down. And uh, it wasn't until he became a Christian that he became on fire Christian. Probably most of you know him. Some of you are already smiling out there. You know who he is. Uh, Phil Robertson, Duck Dynasty guy. But uh, I don't think a lot of people knew that Terry Bradshaw was his backup in college. Uh, and if he hadn't quit uh, football, uh, the world may never heard of Terry Bradshaw because he was better than Terry. <laughs> anyway, the thing is that his life so totally changed and now he's an outspoken Christian wherever he goes. The same thing with you and every one of you. Some of you lived some of those lives and you, recommit, you commit your life to the Lord and you know what it means to be really saved, what it means to uh, live in a more abundant life. But for many of us, uh, we kind of get sloppy in our walk with the Lord, and maybe we've never really committed our life to the Lord. I want to give us a chance this morning to really do that. Now, I want you to take the hand of the person next to you and pray. Repeat after me, okay? Okay. Dear Father in heaven. Dear Father in heaven. I surrender my life anew. I surrender my life anew. To you, Lord Jesus. To you, Lord Jesus. I have not experienced abundant life. I have not experienced abundant life. I need a new life. I need a new life. I pray for that right now. I pray for that right now. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. And cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Cleanse me of I want to live for you. I want to live for you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus name. Now, we're not done, okay? Pray, we're praying for the person next to us now. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. I pray for the person next to me that they will have a full life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. May they experience abundant life. May they experience abundant life. May all unworthiness go. May all unworthiness go. All guilt go. All guilt go. May they be filled with your spirit. Filled with your spirit. Abounding in love. Abounding in love. And goodness of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to worship the Lord a little bit longer. We're going to. Uh,